you are now tuned in to The Money Zone with your host, Falasha Day, the accountant for entrepreneurs. The time is now, your future waits, your money matters, make no mistake, it's not too late to dominate, so don't delay, get your money straight. The money, money, the money zone, together we'll achieve your goals, we're building wealth, you're not alone, so don't delay, get your money straight. Hey guys, welcome, welcome, welcome. It's your girl, Falasha Day, the Accountability Accountant, guys. I am so excited to be with you all today on this amazing Tuesday. So if you guys are new to the Money Zone, I'm your host, Falasha Day, the Accountability Accountant, guys. I help entrepreneurs live the life that they dream of. And I do that by incorporating three things. They're accounting, I hold them accountable, and I pushed them and coached them to their greatness. So if you are a small business owner and you're struggling with getting your business off the ground, if you're struggling on figuring out what's the next steps, then you definitely want to join my mailing list and follow me on all things social media. So my social media handles is Falasha Day, the accountant. So guys, today we have a action-packed, drama feel gossip mode about the the ppp loans and the mountain changes that may occur that i'm hearing through the grapevine and then we're also going to talk about the tax changes that's happening and just overall the business landscape like what's really happening in the internet streets and business streets right now so if you're just tuning in please share the video with your colleagues your biz bestie or your girlfriend anybody that you know of that needs a little bit of uh business acumen and a little bit of knowledge about the ppp loan so guys what we're going to do i'll give you a minute to share the video and but we're going to take a quick break and we'll be right back
Hey guys, so welcome back. Okay, look, 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 look. Between you and I, there is just so much happening right now. So I'm going to be really honest with you. If you don't have an accountant right now, I know you are struggling to stay abreast on all of the new laws, all of the massive changes. So if there's any advice that I would give all of you entrepreneurs right now, you need to find an accountant that is staying on top of the laws, especially if you've received any of the PPP funding or the EIDL loan or you're trying to apply for the employer retention program and everything else. So if you are a small business owner right now, the SBA, and let's, let's really be honest, COVID is the one that made it a requirement now. Well, not necessarily a requirement, made it uh, much more important for you to have yourself an accountant. So right now, my first tip before we go diving right into the content, guys, you need to do yourself a favor and get yourself an accountant. If you don't, you're going to end up, one, having to repay the loan, okay? Two, guess what? Huh. You may not even stay be able to take advantage of any of the laws, any of the changes that has occurred that are beneficial to you and your small business. So right now, if you don't have an accountant and you think it's much more feasible for you to be reading up every law, think about this. If your hourly rate that you're charging your clients is $97 an hour, $97, look, look, look. Okay, hold on. There we go. Ninety-seven dollars, right? And it takes you, let's say, fifteen to twenty hours, because that's how much reading, and actually more than that, honestly, to interpret and dissect all of these laws. So let's give or take. Let's say about twenty hours right now into staying on top of the laws. Ninety-seven dollars times twenty hours is one thousand nine hundred and forty dollars. Okay. And you will end up losing that much money because you're shifting your energy into my arena as your accountant and you're not focused on building your business. So what's going to happen? You're going to end up diving deep into the tax laws and forget about building your business. And you're going to end up losing the 1940, but they're also possibly losing your business. So if you haven't learned anything from COVID is that we have to have our finances in order. OK, but that, that was just a, a tandem right there. OK, on to today's topic. Look, guys, I heard through the grapevine. And we knew the changes was going to happen. But look, they've been so shady. I didn't think that the changes was going to happen after folks didn't receive the loan two to three weeks. Everybody have received their funding. And then now the Treasury is 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 considering making changes to the repayment terms and things of that nature. So I am actually so alarmed um, because number one, and I normally have the full article. However, I am not a Wall Street Journal um, member, so I will not be able to show you guys the full article but let me just show you my screen really quick so right now all of the news is flooding the arena saying you know what trump the sba the treasury department have done the small businesses shady and i fully understand why um we feel like that because what they're attempting to do guys is change the repayment terms and adjust the eight week payroll cycle, okay? So remember, when they issued uh, the loan forgiveness, right? It was for eight week, for payroll, for eight weeks of payroll, okay? And the law stated like, okay, well, you couldn't incorporate any, you're done? Yeah. Oh, big boy, go ahead on upstairs, okay? What? I'm coming, okay? Yeah. All right, see you in a little bit. All right, big boy. Sorry for the interruption. Um, so uh, originally, you know, they will give you funding 
for eight weeks of payroll. Okay, so that's how they were doing the calculations. Um, if you do the mathematics, they will end up taking the 2.5 out of the calculations and dividing that by eight weeks to get your uh, weekly payroll, right? Now, they then completely tried to flip the script and a few accountants in the other groups that I'm in, the tax and accountant groups that I'm in, we were laughing because they completely changed or uh, misrepresented the formula that they were calculating the payroll from. So because Congress do not have any accountants on um, the seats, right? They came up with this um, formula, which is your net income, right? Divided by 52 weeks and then multiply that by 2.5. Now they're saying divide that by eight weeks and then multiply by 2.5. Long story short, basically prepare yourself and watch out for the weeks to come on what changes right? What changes may occur? So right now, I don't want everybody to get all worked up because it's very preliminary. Nothing has been stamped yet that they have made any changes on the repayment terms. It's still the two years. Um, it's still um, the eight weeks. Nothing has been set in stone. But what I found is with situations like this, they have to properly dissect the law. So Congress executed, signed into law, right? The Treasury is the one that oversees it, but then the IRS interprets it for tax purposes. And then the um, Treasury um, dissects it for the borrowers and for you and the banks and IRS. So it's just a clutter of information, a lot of back and forth. So I would just say, just look out for my upcoming content or an upcoming show where I talk about what changes have actually become effective. What changes have they officially stamped into law? So right now they they haven't made any changes yet, so don't worry, but look out for them because in past years, they've always changed so much. Like they will say, oh, well, Bob, you don't have to, which Bob is you, the taxpayer, right? Bob, you don't have to pay this money back. And then six months later, they're talking about the money is have to be repaid and have to be repaid in this term. So why did this happen? First of all, this pandemic was an unforeseen circumstance. It was one of those situations that you cannot, we were not able to predict this, this occurrence of happening, okay? It was very rare, okay? Catastrophic. And in that particular case, because we haven't experienced um, the vast impact that this uh, COVID is having on the economy and our livelihood and our health, then they couldn't prepare for this. It was no way that you can fully prepare for the economic aspect of it. Okay. So right now you just have politicians throwing out bills, lobbyists throwing out bills, and basically Congress looking at them, crossing them out, but they did conclude that the CARES Act will be approved. However, once they came up with the law, it had to be interpreted. So yes, they gave the loan out to you. They said that the payment terms will be two years. As long as they don't make any changes or, and I need to check this out too, to see if any of the promissory notes, then this is where it's going to get tricky. And I just thought about this and I'm going to do some research tonight when I'm done. I am going to look at the promissory notes that my client signed, right? To see if there's any clause that says that the SBA or treasury or whatever can make any changes to loan, the loan repayment terms. If the promissory note says that, then guess what? The SBA and treasury and Congress have complete control over what changes that they make on these particular notes. OK, so the problem is, guys, is that we are not in control. And the other problem is the fact that they have to figure out a way to recover the money that they're paying us as business people to stay in operations and to stay paying our staff. They have to figure out a way how to recoup that. And the only way to recoup that is through three ways. Changing the repayment terms. OK, and shortening the window 
or increase in the entrance or something like that. That's one way. Number two way, beefing up their audits. So right now, the IRS is, you know, taking a hiatus right now. You call them, you may not get through. Um, they're not accepting our power of attorneys. They just opened up the tax practitioner line like two days ago. Great, right? The problem is, is that when it's time for all of the loans to be repaid is when they have to have the final regulations in. So what's happening, people that receive the loan, that first wave of funding, their repayment terms, that eight weeks is winding down. So they are scrambling to figure out what's the next steps. And as I said, if the promissory note doesn't specify that the uh, government or the SBA or whoever's in control, right? Government Accountability Office, I don't know, Office of Budget and Man so many different government agencies that handle the funding. If they don't make any changes, if the, if the promissory note says that they can make changes to our payment terms, then we are duped. We are duped. And so that concerns me because it shows that we are not in control. Who is advocating for us small businesses? Why is it that they can just throw this out and have people go and grab the money? And without, honestly, when I thought about it, that 1%, you would never be able to get a loan like that ever again in your lifetime as a business owner. So a real business would want to qualify for the PPP because the repayment terms is low. It's like basically saying, hey, give me a million dollars. I'm only gonna pay you 1% on that million dollars, okay? And I'm gonna use your 1 million to flip it. And that's what they're allowing us to do. But the problem I have is that they're gonna make changes on it and it's gonna end up impacting your ability to repay the loan. OK, so that's one major problem. So pay attention and look out for all of um, the upcoming episodes of the Money Zone, because I will dive into what exactly are they changing? Are they going to change the payment terms? Are they going to um, uh, reduce the amount that you were eligible to claim or are they going to stiffen up um, their policies and stuff like I'm really curious to see what angle. But from past experiences, if you did not file your taxes correctly over the past three years, my advice is to you is to brace yourself. And the reason why I say for you to brace yourself is because the Treasury can only get this funding back, okay, through taxes. Okay, the government generates revenue through taxes. So the IRS will definitely beat up their audit initiatives to be able to recover the debt and to make sure, okay, that we are sustainable as a as a as a whole as a in, as a whole in the whole U.S. Make sure that because you know right now no one have really looked at the impact that this stimulus payments that we've received, okay, and then all this, also these loans what economic impact that it will have on our ecosystem. No one knows that yet. No one knows that if these notes sit, if this debt sits on the books, what is the impact on the overall interest rates? What is the impact of the economy? So right now, they will definitely make changes. Or what will happen is if they don't... Um, make changes on the repayment terms, the laws and all that stuff. They're just going to beef up auditing on the state level and also on the federal level because they have to recover the money. And who else do, who else would they get it from? Us. OK, because the government don't make money from anywhere else but off taxes. So just look out. So for all of you that have been filing your taxes shady, be prepared for your tax notices. And if they were really about it, like I think they would be about it, about it soon come, right? They're going to send notices randomly to a lot of people just asking you to back up your expenses or to show proof of this or that just to recover the monies that the U.S. has lost due to the loans, the unemployment, and everything else. So right now, everything is preliminary. 
but we heard through the grapevine that they would change to um, repayment terms. And what I don't like about this is that people are now concerned on whether or not they should utilize the money to sustain. I'm going to repeat that. Many small businesses right now are very concerned on if they should utilize the money to sustain. And so the biggest problem that many individuals will face is that there's a clause in this PPP program and any funding program that the SBA has administered through to COVID that specifically says that the owners or the companies should exhaust their funding, their savings, their resources before utilizing the resources of the loan. Remember I said that. And so that's tricky. So they're telling you to go broke before you use that loan. So if I were you and I know that I can make money, if I were you and I know that I'm a hustler, then I wouldn't worry about it. I would just make sure uh, my um, expenses are being tracked effectively. I'll make sure that I'm doing my bookkeeping and my accounting or make sure I hire an accountant. And then I would just leave it into God's hand or the universe's hand because you have to focus on the next coming months. We don't know what impact this pandemic will have on your finances in, in October. We don't know if the loan proceeds that you're holding on to is going to help your business sustain in September. We don't know that even if they open up outside tomorrow in every state, will your business be able to sustain? There's so much perplexing information out there and so much uncertainty that you just have to focus on what's in your control. And right now, what's in your control is to apply for the money, get the loans and utilize it the way it's supposed to be utilized. Use it to pay your staff, your bills, pay off your debt, OK, and build and sustain your business. OK, so that's what I would end up doing and just pay close attention to what's happening. But once again, if you are the business owner and you're doing more reading than me, then that the, there's a problem because that means you're not selling. You're not building. And I said one thing um, before and I don't think it came across the way it's supposed to have come across. And so I have said before, and I want you guys to listen extremely clearly right now. Many of us should not even be in the state that we need alone. Truth be told, as a business owner, as a CEO, you're supposed to have a six months rainy day fund. Six months. So that means if your business bills and expenses, monthly expenses is $3,000, you're supposed to have that times six. Okay. All right. So right now, what's happening during this pandemic is showing that us as Americans are one, superficial, two, we're broke, three, we have poor money management skills, and four, we're just winging everything and hoping for a prayer later. And that's not how you run a business. That is not how you operate a growing, profitable, sustainable business that you guys are claiming that you want to hand down from generations to generations, right? But you're not even doing what you require in your business. Six months of rainy day fund for your business. Your payroll is 10000 If your expenses is 10000 you need six months of it. Okay? Six months. So that means you should have $60,000 in your bank account if your business bills is $10,000 a month. But that's not happening right now. No one is saving. No one is doing what's required. So, guys, what I'm going to do, I'm going to take a quick break. All right. Don't forget to share the video with your friend and then we'll be right back.
Hey guys, welcome back. It's your girl, Falash Day, and you are currently tuned in to The Money Zone on ripradionetwork.com. So if you guys don't know who I am, I'm Falash Day, the accountability accountant, guys. And I come on here each and every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time to talk about the juice, the gist, and money and taxes, accounting, bookkeeping, entrepreneurship, mommyhood, and everything else, all lump sum in one because i fully believe everything that happens in your life in your personal and business life impacts your finances okay so we were talking about in segment one about the changes that the mounting changes that will occur throughout um involving the ppp loan however they're so preliminary they're so preliminary however what I do want you guys to take note of, so if you're just watching this right now, you want to go ahead on and grab your pen and grab your paper because this is what you need to know right now regarding the changes for the PPP loan. So first things first, if you did not know this, when you get a loan, you do not include it into your gross income. So let's say your income is $100,000, right? And you get a loan for a hundred and you get a loan for $20,000, you would not include that $20,000 loan into your gross income. Are we on the same page, right? So when you file your taxes, it will only show the $100,000, okay? Catch 22, that's the way it's supposed to be done. That's number one, don't include the loan into your gross income, okay? Cause it's not taxable. And this is loans across the board. But the problem is the new regulations state that any expenses that you paid out of the forgiven part of your loan is not tax deductible. I'm going to repeat that again, just in case you wasn't able to write it down. The amount of your or the expenses that you pay utilizing okay the forgiven part of your PPP loan so let's say your PPP loan is 20,000 and the bank said hey i'm going to forgive 10,000 of that so whatever you spent that $10,000 on right the forgiven part you cannot deduct that as a tax deduction. You cannot deduct those expenses on your tax return. But guess what get tricky? Financial statement purposes, okay? This is accounting, financial statement purposes, you can. However, tax purposes, you cannot. This is why in segment one, I specify the necessity of you having your accountant now because that complexity of differentiating what is non-deductible or what is deductible expenditures pertaining to the forgiveness part of your PPP loan is complicated. And this is just the beginning. Okay. They also may implement requirements. And if they were smart, they would make a bookkeeping requirement. And so look out for that. So they may say, oh, no, well, we need a ledger or we need a report or we need a spreadsheet that shows all of the monies that were utilized with the PPP loan. And if you're unable to show them distinctively every dollar that you spent that loan on, right, you may not get the correct amount forgiven. So it is a very important that we take heed to the financial requirements that they're placing on you as the CEO of your company. It is now time for all of you that do not take your accounting and stuff serious to take it serious. It is now time for you to understand that guess what? Accountants are not going anywhere. Like, look, I had to dance for a minute, y'all. Like, I was pumped, like not pumped that you guys have like more requirements to stick to, but I'm, I'm just pumped because every year Congress makes accountants much more special. And right now we're like so special. Everybody love us, right? Everybody love us. <laughs> but on another note, guys, I hope that you were able to write that down so you cannot deduct the so so okay you cannot deduct the expenses that you pay through the forgiven part but guess what's so tricky 
We don't know what's the forgiving part. The bank won't tell you until after your eight weeks. Also, there is no definitive uh, uh, request. So they're saying, oh, yes, you're going to have to show what you spent the money on. But they're not saying on what standard. Are they going to say... Oh, provide us a ledger, provide us a worksheet, provide us your financial statements, provide us this. What are they going to, what, what will you have to show for? And all of you that don't have an accountant, you may not be able to whip out those spreadsheets quick enough or those financials fast enough. So if there is not a greater time in your business life to have your accountant, it is time now. The difference between you and I is that I have it here and it comes to me easily interpreting laws and stuff like that and knowing which direction to go into. And this is my focus. You are supposed to focus on building your business. You're supposed to know a little bit of tax, a little bit of accounting so you can communicate effectively with me and understand what message I'm conveying to you and what I'm saying, right? But you are not supposed to be... Oh, let me read this so I can save $300. Let me read. That sounds so, that's why you're not a business. That's why you're not a business. But on another note, a lot of changes. So get your pen and paper again. And so I'm actually jumping for joy right now. If you are not jumping for joy right now, you really don't know that you are winning. So in addition to a lot of you coming up off the unemployment, right? Also through the stimulus checks, some of your um, insurance, uh, rent, everything has been deferred. All right. And guess what? On top of that, for all of my individuals that have not filed a 2016 tax return. Okay. As of April 15th, the normal rules would have been if you didn't put an extension in for your 2016 tax return, you wouldn't be eligible to get the refund. OK, because the deadline has already expired. But due to COVID, the IRS is extending the due date of your 2016 um, eligibility to receive your refund. So let's say you haven't filed your 2016 tax return yet and you're supposed to get a refund. If it wasn't because of the pandemic, baby girl you would not be able to get that refund. But due to COVID, you have up until July 15th, okay? And I'm gonna share my screen. You have up until July 15th to, to file your tax return to get you your refund, okay? So as you can see, it says on April 9th, extension, extension, okay. Here we go. 2016 unclaimed refunds. For 2016 tax returns, the normal April 15th deadline to claim a refund has been extended to July 15th, 2020. The law provides a three-year window of opportunity to claim a refund. If taxpayers do not file a return within three years, the money becomes property of the U.S. Treasury. The law requires taxpayers to properly address mail and ensure the tax return is postmarked by the July 15, 2020 date. So guys, so what does that mean for all of my procrastinators, for all of the people that has been running from child support and IRS and everything else, you still have opportunity now to file your 2016 tax return and receive your refund. In normal cases, you would have lost that money, that $3,000, $4,000, you would have lost that money, right? However, due to COVID. So this is the thing, guys, you know, we always are saying, ah, oh, you know, never looking at the positive things. I'm going to be honest with you. I see so many of your finances being blessed right now that if this pandemic didn't occur, many of your businesses or even your lifestyles would have sustained. But because of COVID, 
and the quick execution of the stimulus checks, okay, and the PPP loans and the unemployment, many of you are sitting on top of money that you've never set on ever in your life. And instead of running out to go buy Chanel, Gucci, and Prada, so when outside come, you be fliff and spliff, right, primped and proper, this is the time for you to start to build your rainy day fund. This is a time for us to start to better manage our finances. If you've never, ever been concerned about money or being uh, uh, um, out of control, then this is a time for you to gain financial control. Save, save, save. I'm going to be honest. I already seen some of y'all. Now, I didn't already seen some of y'all buy some stuff. Now, like for me, I bought um a patio set for the backyard because of the kids and my sister would say who you need to get it for like a year and i'm so cheap y'all i'm like no i'm not getting it no i'm not getting it no i did not dig up my nose y'all i had to scratch right here no i'm not getting it so i ended up getting a seat out um out back for our backyard so the kids can play so why did i do that this is the time that you want to invest into things that will give you the peace of mind and the freedom to live the life and do what you need to do by me getting the outdoor furniture i can come outside and work while the kids run around you, on the other hand, might have needed to buy the same thing to occupy your kids so you can do work. So what do you need to invest in right now to keep your well-oiled machine running or to keep your children happy and satisfied and to keep the flow or happiness within your family? That's what we're supposed to buy, not purchase purses and belts and, and expensive cars. And this is the time to slow up and gain control over our finances because many of you did not get a deferral on your loan you ended up getting a forbearance so a forbearance you're going to have to pay that money up pretty soon many of you have already put in last month right a deferral on your car note so next month you're going to have to pay your car note so start to save and really put that budget together to see What's the bare minimum you need to survive? Because right now we're in survival mode. This, it may seem like we're just inside and, oh, you know, life is still happening. We're straight up in survival mode. We don't know how our economy will recover. We don't know if the stock market is going to crash again as soon as outside open. We don't know if millions of people will die next month. We don't know. So with that vast uncertainty, the least that we can do is manage what we have properly. OK, manage what we have properly. So, for example, if you're not paying your electricity bill, so um, chosen master say, can you get the money if you're a new business? So it depends. That's a really, really good question. So your business would have had to be set up prior to February 15th, 2020. If your business was operational, set up and functioning and making money prior to February 15th, 2020, then yes, you are within the grounds to be eligible to apply for the PPP loan. Now, do you have enough income? That's one thing, okay? Will they require you to uh, provide additional paperwork? Yes, because you're new business. However, as long as your business is registered prior to February 15th, you are eligible to apply for the PPP loan. So that was a really, really good question. Okay, guys. So I talked about quite a bit of stuff today, and I hope that you guys were able to at least grab some of the nuggets that I did give you. First of all, everybody have their own way of savings. So you may hear um your financial guru say three months a rainy day you may hear somebody else say four months me i am not a personal finance guru i am an accountant that specializes in business okay i do individual taxes but i'm not a financial advisor so from my professional standpoint 
how I've seen businesses sustain is by having six months. Three months is not enough for a business because you have to put in money to get it back out. So you need that time to turn over your money to gain a return on your investment. So this is why I said for businesses, you want a six months rainy day fund. Does a tax business count for my husband that does taxes? Yes, a tax business does qualify as a business uh, to uh, qualify for the PPP. Now, what I'm finding is they didn't stipulate that if the business had a loss or if the business was in a negative or so, that it wouldn't get the funding. I haven't seen that. I've been hearing through the grapevine that businesses with losses have received funding. I've heard through the grapevine that businesses with very minimum profit have also received funding. It's just a a give or take situation, honestly. So if I were you and I was a business person, business owner, six months rainy day fund, six months, okay, number one, do your budget. Do your budget. See where every dollar is going. Know where it is and assign it an objective. So if you ended up getting the $1,000 a week or the $600 a week, for your um, unemployment, right? That's six, twelve, eighteen. That's twenty four hundred dollars a month. Automatically, that's the top line income. Twenty four hundred. If your rent is twelve hundred, you need to have on your budget line twelve hundred dollars. That leaves you with twelve hundred dollars to feed your family, clothes, electricity bills, and everything else. You are supposed to account for every dollar, a zero budget. That's what I believe in, a zero budget. Meaning by the time you get every dollar supposed to be accounted for. So your savings, 5%, this 10%, whatever you're comfortable with, right? You do that, but every dollar should be accounted for. So if you don't have a budget right now, you're living life on the edge. I would say, take a step back. After watching tonight's show and do your budgets. If it doesn't sound good, yes, budget, even when I say it, budget don't even sound good, right? But it's mandatory for tough times. This will distinguish the survivors, okay, against the non-survivors. The survivors already have their budget know how much money they're spending on food, seeing that there was an increase in their food costs because I did. My food costs increased almost like $200, a, almost $100 a week, y'all. So I'm increasing my food by $400 a month. I am losing $400 additional every month because I'm in the house. We're eating more snacks. And then because the store's um, cost of goods is higher. So you're supposed to be able to account for that. Do I have enough money to be able to pay $400 more in groceries every month? If I don't, how am I supposed to get the difference? Am I going to incorporate a side hustle? Am I going to try to make more money in my business? What am I going to do? See, the budget shows you what you need to go and do. That is the first step of accountability, your budget. Your budget will say, hey, you don't even make enough money to cover your bills. You are at a negative. You need to make X, Y, Z to pay all of your household bills. Right now, guys, it is wartime. It is us against COVID. It is COVID against the economy. And it's us against COVID, the economy, business, and everything else. So if you want to survive, Get your finances in order. If you want to thrive, get you an accountant. But if you want to sustain and build a profitable business, you need accountability. This is the time where all of us, while I'm sitting here, look like I'm just talking to myself. Hey, Felicia Day, you need to be looking yourself in the middle in a mirror and saying exactly what you aren't doing and what you need to do and do it. Because the difference between the, the one percenters, two percenters, the five percenters of the world, they're working on some stuff right now. They are putting together programs. 
They're putting together stuff to drown your finances. But what are you doing? You're just online, watching the shade room, on IG, shopping on Fashion Nova, okay? Trying to get to the beauty salon, do your eyebrows, and you're waiting for outside. No, you're supposed to be preparing. So when outside come, you will be financially stable. Because you will never get an opportunity like this again. They will never give us unemployment at this rate because they're going to evaluate what's happening and they're not going to do this again. They're not going to give us 1% loans for brown, black, Asian, white, every race, every color, regardless of the size of your business. We will never be able to get a loan at 1% again. You may never get this high unemployment. You may never be able to get your payroll for your employees made. This is the time for you to step up, guys, and hustle hard because God has blessed us through the government. I do believe it. God has blessed you, me, and every business person out there right now through the government because he knew our finances wasn't in order. He knew we needed a breakthrough. And this is your breakthrough. And I'm asking each one of you, show respect. Show that you can manage this money effectively so you can be filled with financial abundance when we are able to get back outside. But guess what? You guys are going to be stunting like my daddy. Stunting like my daddy. Oh, oh, not me. Not me. I'm going to be buying tax lien properties, okay? I'm already saving, 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 okay? Because this is your now. If you've ever wanted an opportunity to come up financially, this is it. Go check out Working Capital PayPal loan. It's 15, 20% interest. Go to get a cabbage loan, 15, 20% interest. Go get a car loan, 25% interest. Right now, the government gave you guys a 1% interest and the least you can do is go out and work your tails off to build your business, build wealth, and build a legacy. There's no excuses anymore for anybody after this pandemic. See, what you guys don't understand is that this has even the playing ground. No one can say the government didn't give them anything. You had the chance to have your accounting and your taxes in order to apply for the loan. You had the chance to get a 1% loan to level up your business. You didn't have to go to PayPal to get a working line of credit. You didn't have to go there. The opportunity was here now. And the winners took advantage of it. And the, and, and the losers made excuses and were scared and are not certain in their abilities. So they didn't know what to do during this opportunity. So my advice to all of you guys is to knuckle it up, work your butts off, get your finances in order, save, 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 do your budget, tide, because God told me to do my tide the other day, I gotta do my tide, tide while we're home and keep pushing y'all businesses, guys. I'm Girl Felashide, the Accountability Accountant, guys. I wanna say thank you so much for tuning in tonight, guys. This is our time. Your legacy starts right now. So let's go out and kill it, guys. I'll see you guys next week. Bye-bye.